Hello, I am Seema. Welcome to my chemistry lessons. The topic of this video is the Bohr's model for hydrogen atom. In the previous videos, we discussed about the drawbacks of Rutherford's model. Rutherford had assumed that there is a nucleus and the electrons, he established the presence of a nucleus, but he assumed that the electrons simply revolve around the nucleus. But the problem with his model was that if electrons revolve around the nucleus, electrons are charged particles and when charged particles accelerate, they are known to lose energy. So if electrons lose energy, within a fraction of a second, the electron should fall into the nucleus and the atom should collapse. But this does not happen. We know that in the universe, atoms have been existing for millions of years. So the next model that was given by Bohr, he could explain that drawback in Rutherford's model. And how did he do it? So let us begin with the Bohr's model. What were his postulates? Bohr said that the electrons, they do not revolve around the nucleus randomly or anywhere. They have fixed orbits. There, are, there is the existence of fixed orbits, which are like concentric circles around the nucleus. And as long as the electron is revolving in this fixed orbit, it neither loses nor gains energy. And if it does not lose or gain energy, then obviously that explains the stability, that as long as it's not losing or gaining energy, that's an allowed orbit, that's an allowed energy state, and the electron therefore does not fall into the nucleus. So this was the explanation given by him. So let's just understand his postulates. He said that electrons, they move in circular parts of fixed radius, and these circular parts of fixed radius around the nucleus are called orbits. They are also called allowed energy states and sometimes they are known as the stationary states. The second postulate was that the energy of an electron does not change with time. The, as long as the electron is, is present in one stationary state, it does not, its energy does not change. It only changes when it jumps to a higher or a lower state. Since there are more than one energy states, and we talked about quantization, that the energy levels are not continuous, they are fixed uh, allowed energy states. And since these are quantized, only certain energies are allowed. So some energies are higher and some are lower. As you move away from the nucleus, the energy state increases. The energy of the energy state increases. And as, it, as the electron comes closer, it loses energy. It acquires stability. The closer an electron is to the nucleus, the more it is attracted by the positive charge in the nucleus and, and hence it is more stable. So he said that the energy of an electron does not change as long as it's moving in the same orbit, but as soon as it jumps from a lower energy level to a higher energy level, it obviously absorbs energy and therefore it jumps to a higher energy state. And when it loses energy, it jumps back to the original state or to a lower energy state. The third postulate was that the frequency of radiation absorbed or emitted during this jump, during this transition, you can calculate the frequency is given by this formula. The frequency is, what is frequency? Energy. Energy is equal to h nu. So frequency nu will be E over h. Therefore change in energy would be, since there's a difference between the energy of two energy states, therefore this difference, the difference in energy you would be delta E and you can calculate nu, that is the frequency. So frequency would be equal to delta E upon H, where H is the Planck's constant and delta E means it's the difference between the energy of two different energy levels or stationary states. So these are the delta E would be given by E2 minus E1, where E1 is a lower energy state and E2 is a higher energy state. So this 
formula that was given by Bohr was known as the Bohr's frequency rule by which you can calculate the frequency of the radiation which has to be emitted or absorbed when an electron jumps from one, uh, one stationary state to the other. The fourth postulate was that the angular momentum of an electron was also calculated by Bohr and he said that the angular momentum of an electron is given by this formula. Momentum we know is mass into velocity. So angular momentum would be mass into velocity, mass of an electron into velocity and since the electron is revolving in fixed orbits, in circular orbits, therefore we have to take into consideration the radius. So MVR is the angular momentum and this was calculated to be equal to uh, an integral multiple of h over 2 pi where h we know is the Planck's constant which is 6.626 into 10 to the power minus 34 joule second to divided by 2 pi and n is an integral value that it is it is 1 where we know n is the energy level the first level second level third level of energy so these energy states have been named or have been numbered the energy level that is closest to the nucleus is known as the first energy state so n would be equal to 1 for the first energy state n would be 2 for the next energy state n is equal to 3 for the third energy state and so on so, depending on the energy state where n is an integer, the, uh, the angular momentum is actually a multiple of, uh, of h upon 2 pi, where h is fixed and 2 pi is also fixed, so it is just a multiple of this, which means that these, the energy, the angular momentum also of these um, energy states is quantized. It has, they have fixed values of angular momentum, they have fixed energies and therefore the concept of quantization was being accepted. The Bohr's model is not the quantum mechanical model but it is a step towards the quantum mechanical model which is accepted by all scientists today. Now in the next video let me explain the uh, what according to Bohr's model was the hydrogen atom like? Meet you in a few.